Hi Dan here, hope you're doing well. I got a question from Jed about doing a video improvising slap grooves. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So first I'm just gonna go through the, the techniques I'm gonna be using today. Because that's the first thing if you want to improvise anything is to make sure that your technique is up to standard. Because improvising is making stuff up. And if you're having to think about what to do with your hands, then you're, uh, too much important brain power is being used for that, okay? So improvising anything is to do with learning what you're learning deeply enough that you then forget it. So here are the techniques I'm using. You know, very simply, we've got the, the thumb part of slap. So, you know, there are lots of different ways of, of doing this, but that bony part of the thumb, I'm just hitting it at the end of the fretboard there. I'm really bouncing off the string, quite parallel. My thumb's quite parallel to the string. But it's a real bounce so that you don't choke the string. I'm also lifting off here so that I can control the length of the note. That's really important. Then we've got the pop just getting under a string and, and snapping that away. That's the octave. I'm going two frets across, two strings down, fifth fret of the D string. I mean, already I'm just improvising, you know, making up something based on that. Now, a drum loop or a metronome would be really, really good to lock in the timing groove feel aspect of this. And I really recommend you do that. I've got a bunch of free loops on my website. I'll put a link below so you can go to that. It's on a page called Free Tools. There's loads of free stuff there. But, you know, before you do that and you're just getting used to this, just have fun with doing it without anything. You know, just, just making sure your technique's good. Okay, now, the second thing that you really need to know, if you need this to be automatic, you want your technique to be, to be there, to be sound, okay? You also wanna know what notes to use. I remember just getting into improvisation years and years ago, and just the question for me, my technique was already quite good. The question for me is what, what notes do I use? I haven't got a clue. And really, this is where scales come in. And depending on what flavor you want, you use certain scales, okay? So here's one I'm gonna show you that's really, really um, used a lot in slap and it's really simple sounding. So that's the G minor pentatonic scale. So that's frets three to six of the E string and then three, five of the A and D. I can use that to explain a couple of the other techniques that I'm going to be using. So let's go straight to the third to fifth fret of the D string with a pop. That's a hammer on. I'm just going third fret to fifth fret. My first finger's on the third fret and as I pop, the third finger is curled and it comes and, and hammers down on that fifth fret, making sure that note's about as loud as the popped one. It's a hammer on. The opposite is a pull off where you keep that first finger on the third fret as your, uh, well, pop again, popping the fifth fret note. And then you flick that string down to the ground. I have the G string muted with the underside of my first so that I don't accidentally catch a note when I'm flicking off, pulling off there. So we've got hammer ons, pull offs, and then you've got slides. Okay, really important. Did a video on slides just now, I'll link to it. But you know, keep pressure into the fretboard as you're playing a note and just move up or down. Also learn your minor pentatonic scale in different positions, not just this one box here. Again, I've got a free book that I'll link to that shows all the shapes of the minor pentatonic. That really is an important scale, okay? So we've got our basic technique of thumb, pop, hammer on, pull off, slides, okay? You can add a bend to that. Let me just play a few things and I'll explain what I'm doing. I'm gonna pick roughly this tempo. As that's going, I'm thinking 16th notes. So I've got my octaves. I'm not gonna show you exactly what I'm doing, but I'm improvising, you'll get the picture. 
point being, this scale sounds really good for this. I did two hammer-ons on the A and the D strings using just thumb there. Really important to get your muting down so that no strings are ringing out. Using space, so I'm thinking this. Three, four and again. At that time, I'm just sliding from the third to the um, to the third fret to the sixth note. That's the first note to the second note in the scale. I actually changed what I did there. I did a tenth. It's a really nice thing to do. So I got my first finger on the sixth fret, the E string, and I got my little finger. You can use your third on the sit on the seventh of the G string. I could use an octave. Okay, listen, every single note I just played was from that very simple G minor pentatonic scale. Let's move things a little bit further. I'm now going to play. It's a G natural minor scale. So that's frets three, five, and six of the E and the D strings. I'm using fingers one, three, and then four. And then fingers one, three on frets three and five of the D string. Using octaves. I've got that rhythm in my head. Dun, ba, ba. So thumb and then pop, pop. And I'm just walking through notes of the scale, sounds melodic. So I did the octaves on the G and then shifted across nicely to the fifth fret, sixth fret of the A string with octaves. And oh, no, I didn't do octaves. I just did normal notes. And then I went to third fret A string. It's a bit weird to be describing the thing that I'm coming up with instantly, but just hopefully this will give you some ideas and you'll be able to do this. Uh, I can do this like this because I'm not worrying about the technique too much. Did a little slide into octaves, leading to that first note again. When you're improvising, oh, I'm improvising like this. There am I. I'm very aware of the beat, you know, one, two, three, four, these are the bars, one, two, and within that you've got your 16th note. So I did mention the technique. I'm now mentioning rhythm. You've got to be really, really aware of that. And it's it's rhythm plus notes that create phrases, okay? And phrases, it's like how you talk. You don't just talk in a steady stream, that's boring. And it's the same when you're playing. Leave gaps, think in sentences, think in fragments. These are called phrases. And when you attach your rhythm to your notes, this is where improvisation happens. Forget slap, in, in any technique, any style of music, okay? There will be different nuances within, you know, different styles. And so slap in particular is using what I'm talking about now. But you've got, um, that's the G minor pentatonic a little bit higher up, so. I'm just playing around with the 10th and the 12th frets of D and G. It really is all about being comfortable with the technique, being rhythmically aware, and knowing your fretboard and scales, okay? It's quite a few things combining to, to make the improvisation happen. Of course, I haven't really mentioned ear. I know, I know in my head. I had that in my head and I can play that. And that's because I've practiced enough times to know that when I play a minor pentatonic scale, it sounds like that. This is the blues note. I know that sound, okay? So ear is another huge thing in improvising. I'm going to show you another very, very handy scale when you're in particular improvising slap lines, and that's 
Put the Dorian mode, okay? In fact, it looks exactly the same as that natural minor, but if you take the sixth note and move it up a fret this way, changes the flavor and the mood and the sound of it. Another way to play it is just to go fingers one, three, four, and frets three, five, six of the G, of the E string, and then frets three, five on the A string, and then just shift back to the second fret, first finger on the second fret of the D string, and go one, two, four. That's on frets two, three, and five, so very slowly. When I'm there, I'm playing that note, the B flat, on the first fret of the A string. See what I mean about fretboard knowledge and awareness? It makes more sense to play it here. Now I've chosen this style, I've chosen this scale, I've chosen this tempo for this lesson, which I you know since it's about improvising, I am improvising on the spot as we go. But you may want to go in a completely different direction, completely up to you. So thanks very much, Jed, for that question. If you have any questions about anything, just put a comment below or get in touch at onlinebasecourses.com. I've done quite a few videos recently based on questions that I've received. You know, I get them every day and some of them I've already answered in videos or blog posts. But um, I think it's quite a good way to go, actually, to, to, to answer any specific questions. Even if you've got a video of you playing, you know, some sort of technique thing you want me to correct, so that would be great. Send it my way and I'll see what I can do for you. So thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel, which I'm trying to grow, and I will see you next time.